the steam tram and the brake van. Oh, Percy groaned as the heat of the sun scorched his boiler. Summer was well and truly afoot on the island of Sodor, but work did not stop for the engines on Thomas's branch line. Percy marshalled empty trucks to the quarry for them to be filled with stone, and Mavis and Toby would take them back to the main line. Most of these full trucks would then become a part of big heavy goods trains hauled by the likes of Henry, Donald or Douglas. Percy had to work extra hard to ensure that the quarry had enough empty trucks to fill up the stone again, but the more trips he took, the more difficult his day became. Stone quarry trucks had a well-known reputation for being the rudest of them all. Don't try and cross a train of quarry trucks, Henry would remind Percy. They can be destructive if not treated properly. Percy frowned at his line of trucks. The truck closest to the front gave Percy a very sly grin without saying a single word. The trip was long and arduous but Percy finally made his way to the quarry. He started backing his trucks into one of the sidings. You took your time, pouted Mavis. Percy was quick to answer. It's these trucks. Henry said they can be destructible. Toby laughed. Are you sure that's what he said? I know what Henry said. Henry knows a thing or two about trucks and I ought to hear him out. But Percy was interrupted by a thud, a whistle and a splintering noise. He had reversed too far back crashing the buffers and damaging the brake van. Luckily, the guard had jumped clear before the accident had occurred, but he was very cross. Just look what you've done, you silly engine, scolded the guard, and that brake van was newly painted too. The quarry manager came to see what was the matter. We were counting on using that brake van too. Now Toby can't leave without a full train. He's right, a train can't go without a brake van, added Mavis, who had learned a lot recently about taking trains outside the parameters of the quarry. I'll call the yard manager at Tidmouth and see what he can arrange, the quarry manager decided. Meanwhile, Toad the brake van stood solitarily in a siding, watching engines go back and forth, all looking rather confident and cheerful. He let out an audible sigh as the bird that sat on his roof flew away. Suddenly, Duck the Great Western Engine slowly came to couple up behind him. Good news, Toad, said Duck's driver. Seems as though you need it on the branch line. Oh, thank you. It would be so good to see Mr. Oliver again. He's been so occupied with summer passenger services. I've longed for a nice coastal run. Duck replied, What do we say about Oliver? You'll be visiting Thomas's branch line today. Thomas's branch line? Oh, what would they need with an old brake van like me? It was the yard manager's turn to pit in. There's been an accident at Anofa Quarry. They're in need of a brake van right away, and you're the only one that's available. Toad was happy to be working, but he longed to see his lifelong friend. Duck and Toad pulled into the quarry, where they were greeted by Mavis and Toby. We're glad you're here to help, chimed Mavis. These trucks can be a lot of trouble, but we've heard that you're a rather reliable brake van. Toad was reluctant. I'll do my best, he said. He was shunted into a siding by Duck, who gave him a parting toot-toot on his whistle as he rolled away. Mavis darted from one side of the yard to the other, arranging a long line of trucks. As the trucks increased in number, the more troublesome they became. Oh look, is that told? one twittered. The brake van that was saved from the scrapyard, said another. I heard some trucks showed him a thing or two when he became a leader, scowled the front truck. And they pushed him into a muddy pond, barked the last. The trucks <laughs> laughed. Don't listen to them, sympathised Toby. Trucks can be troublesome, and it's best to keep an eye on them. Toad was offended. He knew all too well about trucks and wasn't prepared to be told what to do by an engine who he didn't know. Thank you for your advice, Mr. Toby, but I will have these trucks under control, thank you. Toby tried to forget this, but the more he thought about Toad's intolerance towards him, the crosser he became. At last, the train was ready to leave. Toby pulled the insufferable trucks out of the quarry as they tried as hard as they could to hold back. You can't give in to their pulling. 
Toad advice, but he was soon cut off. Thank you, Toad, but I know what I'm doing. It wasn't like Toby to be so easily flustered, but he was certain that there weren't going to be any accidents today. As they pulled out onto the branch line, the heat got to the truck's Toad and Toby. The tram engine doesn't like you, a truck whispered. You should show him a thing or two and hold back when we next try a trick. The trucks were fully aware that if they tried to pin down their brakes that Toby would keep on pulling forward until they stopped. Their chance came when they reached the top of the shore's incline. Hold back, hold back, the truck screamed. Toad thought this was the right opportunity to apply his brakes, but Toby kept on pulling. Then it happened. A coupling snapped, leaving Toad stranded on top of the hill unbeknownst to Toby. Goods trains weren't usually scheduled to stop at passenger stations, but most have platform speed restrictions that engines need to adhere by. Toby slowed down as he pulled into Ellsbridge. The station master monitored the platform as the long train snaked its way in and out of the station. Then he shouted, Stop! Stop! You can't leave here without a brake van! Toby had obviously misheard, to which he replied, I don't want to hear about that brake van again! A red signal then shot up in front of him. Whatever now, he fumed. Toby rang his bell to challenge the signal. Sorry, said the signalman, but I'm afraid you're not allowed to pass unless you have a brake van. A train can't travel without one. The driver and fireman looked at the back of the train, noting the absence of Toad and the guard. The coupling must have snapped on that grade back there, quizzed the fireman, scratching his head. And he was right. As Toby slowly backed in the direction he had come from, there was Toad, sitting on top of the grade waiting for them. Toby felt awful. I'm sorry Toad, I shouldn't have pulled so hard. No Mr Toby, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you in the first place. I shouldn't have listened to those trucks. We both know that trucks can be troublesome, that's for sure, laughed Toby. So maybe we should make sure that we just listen to each other, Toad replied. For the rest of the journey, Toby and Toad travelled safely and kept the trucks in order. As they pulled into Tidmouth, Henry was waiting and was very impressed by how quiet the trucks were. I know you're both good with trucks, started Henry, but I didn't know you were this good. Oh, didn't you know, Mr Henry? It's easy, said Toad. But you must be careful. Trucks can be destructible, Toby laughed as he and his new friend went away, leaving the big green engine lost for words.